is my pet jar of smoke. I see, you have a jar of smoke. I it's do. a pet, apparently. In today's video, we've got a few experiments to try lifting water with chemical and physical reactions. Oh, he's escaping. Listen, I love that. That'll come into play a little <laughs> bit later. Um, so we've got an experiment we want to try, and partially this is inspired by a user who sent us a video of taking a piece of glass, a glass sort of container with a cork in it, and in the video there was a match inside the cork, inside the container, and they used a laser to light it. And then when they lit it, it was like sitting in water, and it sucked water up through the cork into the container. But it reminds me of another experiment I've seen as well, using steel wool, related to the same thing. So we're gonna try a bunch of these today and just explore what is happening, trying to pull water up out of this tray into our glass containers, mostly using fire. The actual idea of this is pretty simple. You light a candle and tea lights usually will float on the top of water. So, so you put that. You can see it's floating, but barely. just barely. So the idea is that we're gonna take this glass container, we're going to cover the candle as the candle continues to burn, hopefully, it will draw water up into the container, lifting the candle with it. There we go. Right there at the end, you watch it. So it climbed a little bit, and then right as the flame went out, it climbed a good bit more. And you can see we're eight millimeters or so above the normal water level. This is where the water climbed to. So we got the water level to rise in this cup. I want to try it again using a smaller container. Now this container just barely fits over these tea lights. Oop, pretty close. We've got three millimeters on either side, so hopefully I can aim well Tiny as I bit put of it over nice. this. Whoop, there you go. So interestingly, although proportionally it's much higher, the total amount that it climbed is about the same which might make sense if we investigate what is causing it to rise up in the first place. When you start talking about this, often it'll get thrown around the idea that what's happening is you are having a chemical reaction, the oxygen inside the container is getting burned up, the oxygen disappears and that creates low pressure. If you Google that, you're gonna start finding pages that say that that's not correct, that you're gonna be getting all of the oxygen inside the container replaced by carbon dioxide and that it's gonna be about the same volume, so it shouldn't explain that change. This other website talks about how the chemical reaction happening is not just oxygen, but it's oxygen combining with the paraffin in the candle wax. And what you end up with as a result of the chemical reaction is not just carbon dioxide for oxygen, but you're also getting water produced in the mix. And you have to take into account everything that's being produced by the oxygen combining with the paraffin. What they said the math works out to is for every two oxygen molecules that disappear, you get one molecule of carbon dioxide. You also get atoms of water, which coalesce together, bringing down the density even further. So we have multiple things that can be happening. When the air inside that chamber starts heating up, it will expand. And when I'm just putting the lid down over it, that expanding hotter air can actually escape. Bubbles might blip out of the bottom a little bit. And then when it cools down, all of that cooled air creates a lower pressure but it is also the oxygen getting used up, turning into both water and carbon dioxide, but in smaller volumes and densities than the original air inside the container. The video that we saw online had Didn't a Didn't have paraffin. It'll give us a different organic compound, the wood and the materials that make up the burning match head. Uh, that will combine with the oxygen, but will it give us the same reaction as the paraffin? Will we have more? Will we have less? Let's find out. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. All of these that we've had so far have been with the candles. Now the candles have a little bit of room we've seen in any of the vases that we're putting them in or the little jars and <coughs> containers. So here's the idea with this one. It's lightly sealed, but it should technically still work. So obviously we can't light that match because it's in glass. However, the video had a very cool solution for it. We have a laser. A burning laser. Very powerful laser. I we're love this, this is like my mini lightsaber. We're going to use the burning laser to ignite the top of the match. So I'm going to try and just light it through the top. Come on. Yeah. Wow. What? That absolutely pulled a lot of water in. 
Are we all confused right now? So I had barely had that cork sink on there. You saw the water just like rush up through the side. That was amazing. <laughs> Beautiful. I think we got that perfectly. That was really cool. Uh, I want to do it again, but this time I want to put the cork on like firmly. When we watched that in high frame rate, we were able to see that air did get pushed out. We saw those bubbles coming out, the physical reaction part that we were referring to before. And then after bubbles got pushed out very quickly, water got sucked in and like, it got sucked in hard and fast. It was a jet that went flying around the inside of the container, filled up quite a bit with water. So I want to see what happens if we have it plugged a lot more firmly and intensely. Oh boy, we'll, we will never get that cork out. That's it Unless forever. it like pops out when this goes. That would be amazing. <laughs> I think it pushed the cork out again. I think so. That has a lot of pressure that it builds up inside there. We had that cork pushed yeah. almost flush with the glass. Pushed it right out. And the expanding air inside there heated up enough that it pushed the cork out and then sucked water in the gap. That is amazing. I love it. That's actually pretty cool. Just yeah. like a smoke barrier with water in it. It honestly looks like you caught a ghost, like a Poe from Zelda. So we've tried tea lights, we've tried matches. This is a slow fuse. I don't actually know what's gonna happen here, but I can only hope it's gonna be highly entertaining. That was good. We missed it on the RX because I just forgot and it wasn't the reaction I was expecting. And I was like, oh no, we got to contain that. And then I, I just missed it. So the fuse itself is a little bit harder to light with the laser than a match head is. So we've actually taped a match head to the fuse to try and get the most exciting reaction we can. Let's go. Yeah, let it go like, oh my gosh, still going. Glorious. That was pretty great. So I'm pretty happy with the results. Yep. There's a couple things I do wanna try to toy around with these. We have done some experiments in the past with liquid oxygen. And while we're not going to use liquid oxygen, I do wanna try using a high oxygen environment and see what kind of reaction we get. So I'm going to set up the same thing with the match and the cork in the water, but I'm going to just flood the container with pure oxygen gas right before I cork it up. Uh, hopefully this won't lead to anything exploding. I hope it does. Here goes. Go Attempting it. to light a match on fire in a high oxygen environment. Ha! <laughs> that was fun. Glorious. <laughs> so apparently the higher oxygen content, I don't think the oxygen itself expands more, but I think because it makes the flame burn more energetically, it does heat up all of the gas more and Obviously, we got a much more exciting reaction where it just right off the court. I love that. So three tea lights will fit under one of these jars very easily, but the problem is they're floating around in the water, so I've just taped three together so they can't escape. So we can try a larger one. This is almost entirely oxygen inside this glass cup. I'm gonna oh, set good. it down over the candle. I expect that candle is going to burn very brightly for a second or two. Oh, there's the bubbles getting yeah. pushed out. Still burning. That is a very bright Still white burning. burn. Candles don't normally burn that. It is whiter, yeah. Yeah, look right. at the comparison. The color is mm -hmm. different. Burning in a near pure oxygen. It's also lasting way yeah. longer. So it's more not like fuel. a bigger or more intense fire. In fact, it looks smaller, if anything, but yeah. it's lasting way more time. And brighter. So last time it was when the fire went out that suddenly the water rose up by a lot more. This is raising up considerably more before the fire goes out. 
about to go out and I think we're out now and look how much faster it's going. Yep, there it is. It went out and we've got this sudden extra rush. There's of, the smoke. All of the air that was inside there is now cooling down a little bit, condensing, pulling more water. That is, whew, I want to say, all right, now we're going to do at least three times the volume of water. And here's how we're going to test four. it. Three candles, watch the comparison. And again, a smaller jar even, a little bit wider. You can see the difference there, but check this out. Wow. Okay, there we go. So that was three. Three candles makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Oxygen-rich cup, three candles. That'd be great. Here it goes. Yes. Look how bright they are. Oh, it's so pretty. It Definitely looks, a brighter. It looks like a tiny magnesium fire. Like, <laughs> just that pure white. There they go, oh, and... Awesome. It's quite a bit. So you can raise the water higher. I'd say, yeah, I'd say the difference isn't as extreme, but I'd say we have at least an extra centimeter. centimeter yeah. At least an extra centimeter of water in there. This is working really cool. Yep. There's one more thing that we want to try, and that involves using steel wool. Steel can burn, it's a rapid oxidization. Technically, when steel rusts, that's a type of burning, a very, very slow burn. It's a combination with oxygen, and you get iron oxide out of it. So what we want to do is encourage that reaction in glasses in the water. And so we're talking about the paraffin or the wood, when that combines with oxygen in a burning reaction, you get a chemical reaction where you puts off carbon dioxide and water droplets. We're going to get something different with steel wool. It's going to turn into iron oxide by grabbing onto those oxygen molecules. And we want to see what happens if we put that in water because I've been told that you can do that. You put steel wool in a cup, put it on water, and as it uses up the oxygen, as it grabs the oxygen out of the air and binds it to the steel, it lowers the pressure inside the container and will actually pull water up. But it's a much slower reaction. So we're going to just gently squish this into the top of the cup. You can see that it just holds itself in place. There we go. Now to encourage the reaction, we're also going to sprinkle a little bit of white vinegar on it. This vinegar helps speed up the rusting reaction. We're going to leave one cup with normal air in it, and the other one we are going to flood with oxygen gas. And we just want to see if having the difference between a high oxygen content and a regular oxygen content changes how much water it pulls up or how fast. We're going to leave these overnight and see how they're looking tomorrow morning. We've left these overnight. This is a shocking this change here. This worked so well. So this container, labeled air, just had normal air in it. It had the steel wool. I had dripped some vinegar down onto the steel wool to help the rusting happen. And we got some lift. We got... It's about what one candle yeah, would do. Three quarters of an inch of water pulled in, maybe. This one was in a very high oxygen environment. I had filled the container with pretty much pure O2 and I didn't like hermetically seal it or anything. I just put my hand over the bottom of the cup before I put it on the water. But you can see, look how much water this pulled in. This thing's almost half full of oxygen being pulled out and bonded onto the steel to create iron oxide. That's insane. Yeah, the water level has changed visibly, obviously, but that is just so cool to see. This is, this is, this is how you science. It's a safe science. It's not. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top. Check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.